In this session, I'm going to look at how we set up to do a multi-track recording. So this is a combination of some setup on the desk and then a little bit of work on a laptop. So the first part of this will be the desk setup and then we'll go and look at the laptop afterwards. So first of all, I've got the normal setup as I would have on the desk with the scene ready. I've got a simplified one for the purposes of the, this demonstration. So I've only got two mics and a keyboard. So that'll be enough to show you the, the principles of it. Um, what I want to do now is I want to tell the desk to send some, some inputs and outputs directly to my laptop. So to do that, I go to the IO page. So that's the button on the far right below the screen. So I press that. And that what that does is shows me all the inputs and outputs and how they're routed. Now you can do a lot here and it's, there's some quite complex things that can be done. Uh, some of it will be restricted based on who you're logged in as. For the purposes of this though, we are only going to be changing a couple of things. So I'll explain what those are. So in my simple setup, I have got uh, two vocal mics on channels one and two. They're plugged in locally for this demonstration. And I've got a keys set up on channels three and four as a stereo input. That's the only thing that I'm going to look at. So they're set up on local. That's fine. I don't need to touch that. They're my inputs. So what I want to send to the laptop is two things. I want to send the main left and right because it's quite nice to have the whole thing. And then I want to send the individual channels. So to send the main left and right, what I do is I go to outputs. This is now showing me what's connected to the output from the here. So down the left here, I look for mix out. They are then my groups auxiliaries and so on and further down here I've got main left and right so I then need to look at the top where it says local s-link me USB that's the one I want so main left and right find that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send that out on one and two of USB so if I tap on one of those it'll say do you want to start patching so yes and what I'm going to do then is say right left is going to channel one right is going to channel two so that's going to go out through my USB port to my laptop on channels one and two. So that's main. And then for the inputs, what I use is this thing here that says tie lines. So I tap on that. Again, down the left here, I've got local S-Link. For this video, I'm using local. If we're doing it in church, we would probably be doing S-Link because that's the stage box. So again, across the top is what I'm patching it to. So again, you can do different things, but I want USB. So I'm going to patch from the local channels to the USB. So I find what I'm looking, what I'm doing. So I know that I've got my vocal mics on local one and two. So the next available USB socket, USB channels are three and four. So I'm going to patch those to three and four. My keyboard is on inputs seven and eight. It's a stereo one. So seven and eight, I'm going to map to five and six on here. So seven and eight. So that's the patching done. That now is sending main, left and right to the first two, and then it's sending me my vocal mics through onto three, four, and then the keyboards onto seven, onto five and six. That's how I've patched it. That means that now it's sending the desk channels out to my laptop. And that's that that's that now set up and ready. So this is just to show you the back of the desk where the USB is plugged in, in case you need to know. On the back of the desk, as you're looking at it from the front, it's on the left hand side. It's on the, obviously on the right, I was just looking from the back. Uh, so the sockets I've got in view here are USB, network and S-Link. So normally when it's in church, it will be plugged into the network for the access on the iPad and the S-Link will be plugged into the stage box. The USB then uses a standard USB cable, which you'd use for a printer. Uh, so that plugs into there. For the second part of the session, I'm now going to move over to my laptop where I'll show you how we connect up the from the laptop side and run the multi-track recording software. So on the laptop itself, uh, we've got Tracks Live installed, which is a free application which we can use for doing multi-track recording it's quite straightforward relatively but it gives us all the features we need uh, so on the on the laptop once you've logged in then tracks live is on the desktop so we start that up 
and that will load it up with a default page that comes up. The first thing we then need to do is make sure that we've got it set up to get input from the desk. So to do that, I go to the system settings button here and on the audio system settings, which should be the first thing that comes up, then we need to check that it says that it's using the ASIO audio interface. That's the thing that allows us to talk to the desk. So it's either none or ASIO for all, so that's fine. Uh, on the left hand side where it says inputs, these are the USB input channels from the desk, the ones that I mapped on the IO screen a bit earlier. So we want to make sure they've got enough of those brought through into the software to be able to do the recording. So I brought in two vocal mics, the stereo keys and the main left and right, so that's six channels. So I only need the first six, so I can turn off the others that I don't need. So no point in having anything in unnecessary in there. So that's my six from the SQ brought in. Um, on the top here it says sample rate 48 kilohertz. On the desk before I'd already set it up as 48 kilohertz. I'd also made sure I'd set to USB-B on the uh, settings. So you need to double check that if you don't get any anything through. Outputs I'm not worried about at the moment because I'm not going to be doing playback just yet. But what we can do at some point later is use the output side of this to do a virtual sound check back through the desk with the recording that we've made. So once I've picked out my six, that's fine. Do OK and I'm going to start a new session. So I need to give it a name. And what that'll do now is it'll load up the main interface for Tracks Live with the default six tracks that I've put in and that no, we're now ready really so to make it a little bit clearer what's going on and based on how i set it up in the io earlier i'm going to name these because that makes my life a bit easier so we had main left main right vocals one vocals two and call it keys left keys right so there are the six channels that I mapped on the desk. So that's the main outputs and then the four input channels. So at the moment I can't see anything, but if I click on the little global record or I could do it on individual channels, I click on those. Now I'm starting to get a feed from the desk. And because I've actually got something playing on there, I'm actually getting some levels. So on these little meters here and on the mix at the top there, you can actually see there's something coming through. So my channels are muted, but even when the channels are muted, because they're a tie direct from the channel, I will get that coming through. And nothing on the main left and right because I've not unmuted any channels. So I don't get anything on the main left and right at all. Um, the vocal mics one and two are sat there and picking up my voice. And the keys left and right are picking up a little bit from um, a recording that's being played. So if I then go and unmute my channels on the desk, you can now hear something in a little bit in the background. You can also see that on the main L and R on here, I'm now getting some levels coming through because I've got I've got actually got a feed coming through. So that's quite useful. So the main L and R will get the same, basically the same mix that you're getting in front of house speakers. So it's quite useful for comparisons. Whereas these four channels will get exactly what comes in from the microphone or from the keyboard or from whatever. No EQ or anything on it. It's directly from the source. So that's quite useful for doing, uh, for basically being able to do mixes later or for doing a virtual sound check. So I'm, I'm listening, but I'm not actually recording yet. If I want to actually record, then I need to click on the no record button at the top, press that. And that's now starting to record from the desk. So that will now pick up whatever's being played um, and being recorded directly onto this laptop. Uh, once I'm ready, well, I'm done. So if once the song's finished, for instance, I can stop that and I can save it. So if I do save, just to make sure that's saved, that's now made a recording. Um, that's now got that on there and I knew there were levels coming through I could see it on there and if I wanted to I could then play that back on here and listen to it or I could play it back through as a multi-track recording on the desk. Uh, that's something we'll try and go into in a future session 
but that's how you do your multi-track recording setup.